through some lessons, connect with friends, worship God with over 18,000 people. And that was just an incredible time. And uh, fortunately enough for my wife and I, on July 12th, we celebrated our one-year anniversary. Woo! Yeah. One year down and many to go, right, honey? Here we go. Awesome. So uh, one year down. It feels awesome, man. Just, you know, one of those things like once you get your first year done, you feel like you can conquer the world. But the next day, I was like, oh, man, I got so much to learn, <laughs> you know? So um, anyhow, it was, it was a great time. We got a chance to, to go to the Dominican Republic. We got a couple of days off, and we took off, and it was an incredible time. Um, I will tell you all about, all about the beaches and how beautiful it is, but I want to make anyone struggle this Sunday morning. But uh, it was just a great time, and we got a chance to, to go and visit the church out there. And, and the church, uh, well, one of the churches out there, it's in La Romana, which is uh, about an hour away from, from the capital, Santo Domingo. And it was so encouraging to be there because, um, let me see if I, this is not working. Uh, here's a quick picture that I wanted to share with you guys. We'll get there. All right, so that's, that's a, a small section of, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's a small section of, uh, of the church there. Uh, the total uh, size of that church was about 45 members, and uh, there we're just taking groups. And let me be honest with you, it was a little scary going to the Dominican Republic because it's, it's a third world country. We didn't know what to expect, you know. Obviously, I don't look like anybody else there. I'm a little bit lighter, you know, uh, on the other side. And when you speak Spanish, there's so many dialects, not dialects, but just a different language, you know. Not a, how do I put it, like a pronunciation or kind of, yeah, it, it's just a different, they could tell that I wasn't from there. Uh, they were like, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm Salvadorian. No, where are you really, you know, I was like, they could tell right away that I wasn't from around there. All right, I was trying to blend in, but it wasn't working. All right, but uh, it was a great time. And, and what was really neat is as soon as we got there, uh, as, you know, as soon as we step into the church, we just felt this incredible love. We just felt this hospitality. And I was like, I never met these people before, but man, is it great to be kind of like home away from home, you know? And I had a great time. We got a chance to connect. And this is one of the uh, brothers here who leads the campus ministry there, and they're working, and they're trying to continue to grow. And it was just an inspiring time. It was so good that we went back the, sun the next Sunday, and we had to drive about two hours to get to church. Um, so it was just a, a great time. But, you know, if you're visiting us here for the first time, I also want to give you a warm welcome. And I hope that you feel encouraged, grateful, and excited to be here. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this series called Functional Faith. As you guys saw the video, we're trying to apply, you know, our faith to make it everyday practice. Not just, you know, faith when it's coming through difficult times. We want to have faith on an every single day component. And Mike kicked it off, uh, kicked it off for, for us on July 10th. And last week, Peter got a chance to preach, and he talked about this seed, a small seed growing to become a giant sequoia. You guys remember that? Yeah. If you didn't catch those, you can catch them online uh, at the YouTube channel that we have, or uh, you can go to our website. But that's how I've been able to catch up, because I was gone, so I was able to catch up. See, Mike, you look great on video, by the way, bro. And in person, and in person. All right, and in person. All right, and, and Peter, it was great to be able to follow you there. And it was encouraging to be able to look at Abraham and to see how he was the father of faith and how, you know, God can take this seed and grow it to a giant tree. And I wanted to kind of touch up on that today, and I wanted to continue to talk about this idea of a seed growing to becoming something greater. And so the title of today's lesson is called, The Seed is on Schedule. Everybody say it, The Seed is on Schedule. The seed is on schedule. All right, you probably wonder, all right, David, what in the world are you bringing me to here, okay? What is this seed is on schedule? And I'll continue to explain, but before we continue to do that, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this morning. Uh, God, thank you for just the worship. God, I, I already felt this moved by my heart, just being able to focus on you. And God, thank you for every person that, that made the drive, that made the effort to come here this morning. And I know, God, that we all have needs, and that's why we're here, because we need you. And I pray that right now you will allow your spirit to move powerfully. God, please remove me out of the way that this may be a demonstration of your spirit's power and that, God, you will go out and whatever I lack that you fill in. Thank you again for this morning. I pray that you remove all distractions, that you, any of whether we had a hard time in traffic or getting up and getting ready, God, that we can put that all to the side and that we can get centered and focused on you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us an incredible opportunity to worship you this morning. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So we'll continue here. And, and, and 
the, the main passage that I'm going to use for today is in Mark chapter 4. All right, I'll put it on the screen. You don't have to turn there or click there. But in Mark chapter 4, Jesus here is ta- trying to do some groundwork with his disciples. He goes and he's trying to describe to his disciples what the kingdom of God is like. And his disciples had this preconceived notion, and the Pharisees during that time believed that Jesus was going to come and rule a militaristic kingdom, meaning that, you know, he was going to conquer territories, and he was going to do kind of what David did in the Old Testament and go conquer and do things. But Jesus was like, no, guys, this kingdom that I'm talking about is is not what you're thinking. It's not of this earth. And in Mark chapter 4, you know, we're going to go ahead and jump into the text Mark uh, chapter 4, verse 26, it says, He also said, This is what, what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seeds on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. And it continues, All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the thread, then the full kernel in the head, and as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. All right, so here Jesus is trying to describe this kingdom of God. And he's trying to illustrate that it, it's kind of like a man going out and scattering seeds. And he's talking about, you know, the seed goes through different stages. And here's what I want to talk about today. God's kingdom and our faith comes in stages. And, and, and you know, I try to do a little bit of, of research and I'm not much of a farmer. I, I got my farmer shirt. I think this is a farmer shirt. I don't know. It's long sleeve. All right, that's why I'm dressed like this. But I, my parents were not farmers. I'm a local city boy. As you can see, I'm trying to blend the city and the farm together. But I have no idea. The most experience that I have in farming or gardening was last year when Suzanne Yule asked me to take care of the, her house and watch over her garden. All right, Uh, I just prayed and I watered and I said, God, please let us survive for one week. And it did. Amen. Woo! So that was all my experience that I had. (laughs) One week. They got back and I was like, I was like, oh, come on, look good. Um, But she was happy. We made it. I talked to her earlier today in Kingdom Kiss. She was happy. Amen. Um, But uh, as I was doing some research, I I started to look at, okay, what would a farmer use during Jesus' time? Because I really want to connect with this illustration. Jesus seems to be keen about using this type of illustration. So I went and I got a couple tools, all right? So, so bear with me. I'm going to try to share with you a couple of tools that I had no idea what they were used for. But uh, I did some research on it, all right? And, and this, this tells you how much I know. Because I was supposed to try to get a spade. Everybody say spade. spade. All right, turn to your partner and ask them if they ever used a spade before. You ever used a spade before? All right. Raise your hand if you used a spade before. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. All right. You guys are awesome. All right. So a spade, this is a shovel. All right. All right. This is a shovel, but it looks like a spade. All right. <laughs> a spade is slightly smaller. Is that correct? And, uh, and the spade, from what, so I'm going to call this a spade. All right. So if I refer to it, don't get mad at me. I know it's a shovel. I read it right here, and I was like, oh, that's not a spade. All right. So... <laughs> So a spade, what a spade is used for, is used for plying the ground. You're trying to break up the ground. And, and this is what a spade is used for. You're trying to plow the ground so that the seed can fall into the ground. Right? Anybody know what this is? Oh, man, you guys are awesome. I had to look this up. All right? I went to like five different stores, so my wife helped me out to find this. These things are going extinct. Not too many people use sickles nowadays, right? So a sickle is used so when the, the harvest has grown, you grab the sickle and you go around and you're trying to grab all the, the harvest. You're trying to reap all the harvest. You're cutting and trying to load it up. So we have on this side, we have the spade and we have the sickle. And, and there's a process, and this is what Jesus was trying to communicate to his disciples. That there's a process in his kingdom and there's a process in our faith. From using the, the, the spade, plowing the ground, to actually reaping the harvest. And that middle ground is called the soil stage. Everybody say soil stage. The soil stage is where our seeds go into. This is where we go ahead and have to wait. And that's what I want to talk about. The seed is on schedule. Because a lot of times in our society, you know, we try to, we try to use the sickle before we ever use the, 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 the spade. A lot of times we're trying to reap what we, yet we have not sown. 
You know, we live in a society where we think that our destiny is like Burger King. We want it in three minutes, this way and that way, without the pain and without the suffering, and boom, there's my destiny, just like Burger King. I want it my way. You know, we li- again, like we said, we live in a society where we're trying to reap what we have not yet harvest. We live in a world where we try to buy things that we can't afford. We sleep with it before we put a ring on it, if you guys get what I'm saying there. You know, there's, there's, there's a shortcuts to uh, our lives that we're trying to take, and, and Jesus is saying, guys, no, it doesn't work this way. The kingdom that I'm trying to illustrate here is first, you got to grab the spade. you got to plow the ground. There's no shortcut around that. you got to plow the ground, and then you can move on to the sickle. But in between, there's something that we got to focus on, and that's called the seed and, and the seed going into the soil. So we'll continue here. Um, let me go ahead and check the next slide. All right. Um, in verse 26, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seeds on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the, spe- the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. And as I thought about this, man, I-, I was really encouraged just to see what the kingdom of God is like. Kingdom of God is like a man who's scattering seeds, who's throwing seeds out. And I don't know about you, but I love coming to church. Don't you love, like coming to church? Yeah? Because we feel like we get a chance to be refreshed through God's Word. We feel rejuvenated. We feel inspired. Maybe you have a conversation with somebody, and they are sprout, they're, they're scattering some seeds, and they give you hope. They give you faith. They give you encouragement. And I have a question for you this morning. What are you scattering this morning? What are you throwing out? It reminds me of the series Think for Eight that, that we went through. You know, what are you putting into your, into your thoughts, and what are you giving out to other people? So, uh, you know, that was that was just a freebie that had nothing much to do except we're scattering seeds. And the, the verse 27 is what really encourages me uh, because uh, while I was in, at the REACH conference, if you've been to those conferences, you know that you go from one scheduled uh, lesson to another to another. You're packed and, you know, you're meeting with people, grabbing food. And it's a great time to be able to, again, worship, connect with friends, be inspired. But it can be a little bit overwhelming. You know what I mean? It can be like, whoa, that's a lot. Um, and one of the things that I love to do is whenever I go to conferences or to new places, I love to go to spend time with God for the very first time, kind of like, man, kind of like Pokemon Go. You know, you try to go to new places to get new Pokemons and stuff like that, all right? In the same way, well, not in the same way, but, you know, I like to go to new places. That's all I'm trying to say. I love to go to new places, and I like to connect with God at a deeper level. And one of those nights, uh, as I was connecting with God, I started thinking and I started thanking God for my life. I just started pondering, and, and here's a challenge for you. Just go out and pray to God and just thank him. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Well, you just spent a prayer just thanking God. And I got caught up in one of these prayers where I was just thanking God. I was thanking God for my life, for the things that I have, for my family, for my friends. And I was like, man, when one year's coming up, that's exciting. And then I try to answer this question. How did I end up here? And the truth is that I don't even know how. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I, don't, I have no idea how I ended up with this life. And I, I, you can probably relate with this man in verse 27. It says, not in day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. And if you take a moment to consider your life, you'll realize that there's so many blessings in your lives that if you really think about it, you don't even know how you got. You know, some of us, applied for a job that we knew we were unqualified to do, but yet somehow we got it, amen? Woo, you know, like there's, there's one of those things that, hey, I just ended up with a job and I got it and I'm grateful. Maybe you're in school and you were like, dude, I'm not doing well in this class. I don't know how I'm going to pass, but somehow you pass. Woo, amen? Right, you don't, your people ask you, how did you get there? I don't even know. And then, you know, maybe if you're like, hey, I'm married and, and somebody asks you, hey, that's a great wife you got there. She's beautiful, spiritual. How does she say yes? And you try to think it was your charms and your good looks, but then you really think about it and you're like, man, that was all God. I don't even know. You know what I mean? Well, I can preach. I feel that way. I feel that way when I think about my wife. Baby, you're awesome. Thank you, God. Uh, that's all I could say. But, you know, that's how, how faith works. A person of faith believe, believes that God is always carrying them through. And that's super important for us to understand. And, you know, Warren Buffett said this. Um, This is what, sorry, let me get there. Warren Buffett said this. He said, no matter how great the talent or efforts, some things just take time. All right? Again, no matter how great the talent or efforts, some things 
just take time. And that's what I want to dive into a little bit about, you know, talking about our, our faith, how it can take some time. And a person of faith knows that somehow, some way, God is going to carry you through. Uh, going to, back to Mark chapter 4, it, you know, here's, here's the challenge that Jesus was trying to communicate with his disciples. He was trying to help them to understand that God is in control. But so many times we try to rush things on our own agenda, don't we? So many times we think that, hey, I should be here by now. This is where I need to be. My faith needs to be here or that. And here's the challenge that we have as, as Christians. Our challenge as people of faith is to synchronize our faith to God's schedule. Again, let that sink in for a moment. Our challenge is to synchronize our faith to God's schedule. But you might be asking, well, David, how do I do that? Because God doesn't tell me when he's going to deliver his promises. Isn't that the challenge that we face? And after doing so much traveling, I don't know if you've been there, but how do you feel when an airplane gets delayed? You know, how do you feel when something's not on schedule the way that you expected it? How many of you guys get real thrown off? Like, man, I'm, you know, you don't have to raise your hand, but I know that a handful of us can get thrown off. And that's the battle that we face when we're trying to synchronize our faith to God's schedule because God never says, hey, this is your harvest time. You know, by the age of 27, you'll be married, don't worry, enjoy your life prior to then, and you'll be good. No, he doesn't say that. The, the thing is, how do you battle through with that challenge? And the answer is that you keep believing that God is working in your life, regardless of how you feel or what you're thinking. Um, and, you know, here, our, our lives are like the seed. I'm going back to this middle analogy here, you know, because let me tell you something. When you give your spade, if you have gotten a spade and you put it to work, it takes faith. You're, you're investing into something that you can't see, right? Isn't it true? You're applying and you're trying to work a soil, but you have not seen the fruit yet. So it takes faith. And then the sickle, it can take some faith. you got to wake up and believe that something's going to spring up. So you grab your sickle, and you go, and it takes faith to go into that and to reap your harvest. But what takes the most faith is being in the ground of uncertainty and still continuing to trust God. And that's what I want to talk about is this idea that, man, our faith gets really tested when we don't see what's happening in our lives. And, uh, you know, i, I got to confess something here is that our, our faith goes through challenges and goes through ups and downs. Just kind of like in, try to put yourself, I'm going to try to personify an inanimate object here. Think about your life being a seed and going deep down in the soil where you do not know what you're doing, where you're going deep down and you don't even see the light. All of a sudden you're being buried. And you don't know how to get out of that hole or how to get out of that, that pit. And you're just stuck there and you feel like you're, you're drowning. And this is where, you know, we got to trust that God is working in the middle of those depths. And I, I don't know where you are today, but I, if I can, can I be vulnerable with you guys? Can I be vulnerable with you guys? Thank you. Eric, you gave me, uh, you gave me permission. Can I get other permission? Can I be vulnerable with you guys? All right. Walking with God has not been easy. It's challenging when you can try to put your faith in God and it's hard to see the outcome at the end of the day. You know, one of the difficult challenges that I've had was, you know, my, my mom was suffering some health issues. And I started worrying. And I was like, man, like, how am I going to deal with this, with, you know, with this issue? And, you know, I felt like my, my seed was getting dark and I was in a dark place. And then I also started thinking like, man, you know, uh, being in the ministry, sometimes you deal with, with problems and issues and you're like, how are we going to get by this? How are we going to move forward? It can be challenging. You know, if you've been married for any period of time, you realize that in marriage, sometimes it can feel like, what am I doing? You can feel lost, you know? It's challenging. It's difficult. But this is where we got to put our trust in God. And I want to encourage you this morning. Uh, my whole purpose of this is to try to encourage you and understand this that God has a plan and that we're in his hand. And I want to share something with you, going back to the seed analogy, because our dreams are a seed, our faith are a seed, our, you know, our desires are seeds. And here's what's really interesting about a seed. A seed has this thing called an outer layer, a, a shelter, like a seed coat. And it's cool because when it goes underground, that seed coat protects it. In a similar way, 
God sends his angels to protect you. And I want to encourage you that no matter where you are or how difficult or how hard you think the soil is, God has his arms around you. I want to inspire you and encourage you today, this morning, that God is with you. And, you know, he he's, uh, uh, has his arms around us and he's protecting us. And as I thought about that, you know, God also protects us in a different way. Have any of you guys ever prayed for something and not gotten it? Yeah? You guys ever pre- prayed for something and not gotten it? But then later on, maybe years or months down the line, you realize why you didn't get it, you know? And that was God's protection of you. That's God saying, hey, I got you. I'm in control. Continue to put your hope and your trust in me. And uh, not only do we have a seat of protection, not only do we have a coating of protection, uh, what's also interesting about the, the, the seed is that it has nutrients inside the seed that allow it to grow even when things get difficult, even when it's not being supplied with a lot of nutrients. The seed already has everything it takes to sprout inside of it. And I think about that in my relationship with God, and I think about you in your relationship with God. God has given you the Holy Spirit, which has everything you need to flourish. Let me say that again. God has given you everything you need to flourish. And I just want to encourage you with that and remind you that, hey, you might be going through a difficult time. Maybe, you know, you're experiencing uh, the loss of a family member. Maybe you're going through a financial crisis. Maybe you're feeling uncertain in relationships, or maybe you're dealing with depression or loneliness. Or maybe you're getting ready to transition to a new stage of your life, and you can feel like, man, there's so many uncertainties. I have the pressures of the world, but I just want to encourage you that God is protecting you and that he's giving you everything you need to flourish. Amen? Amen. Are you guys with me? All right. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. And, you know, not only that, but he's also given us potential. God has given us the potential to grow, to be go from that seed that Peter was talking about last week to growing and becoming a giant sequoia, regardless of what we're going through today. And we just got to be able to trust God and have faith that he continues to direct us. I wanted to share a quick video with you guys about the process. And now that I've been talking about the seed, but I want to give you kind of like an insight uh, of, of what, how the, the seed grows and develops. Let's go ahead and get the lights down and then... We'll stop right there. Awesome. All right. I don't want to put you guys to sleep, but isn't that pretty cool? <laughs> I know the music, you're like, hey, David, this is all, wait, okay, the, the message here, all right? What I'm trying to share here is hopefully you get a chance to see how a seed grows. If you notice, if you pay close attention to it, there has to be a root that needs to be developed first. And a lot of times we try to take a shortcut in our lives and avoid those growing pains. A lot of times we try to avoid what God is trying to do in our lives. But what he's really trying to do is help us to establish some roots so that we can become what he intended us to become. And that's what I wanted to encourage you guys with this morning. And um, let's see if I can get the next slide. Um, because here's the, 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 the message here. Your faith, when, t- when tended properly, will turn into a harvest in your life. Here's what I wanted to communicate with you guys. This is what functional faith is about, is when you tend your faith properly, it will turn into a harvest in your life. And I want to encourage you guys to remember that this morning, that 
you know, it's important that we continue to take care of our faith because that's what's going to help us to look at the rainbow even in the middle of the storm. That's what's going to help us to get through when we feel like, man, what am I dealing with? I don't know how to handle this. You know, maybe you might be feeling like, I don't know if my son or my daughter is going to make it as a disciple. I don't know if they're going to stay faithful. You could be worried. But this is what faith can do. Faith can help us to believe that God is still working. And we cannot let go of his promises. And we can continue to put our trust and our hope in him. All right? Are you guys with me? Amen. All right. you guys. So um, here's what I wanted to share with you as we transition over to looking at Jesus' faith here. And in John chapter 12, verse 23, as we get ready to take communion, in John chapter 12, verse 23, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And you know what's interesting about this is that Jesus is our prime example of how we should be as seeds. We should be dying to ourselves. And here's what I want to encourage you this morning and what I want to t tell you is that many people are depending on your faith. Other people's salvation and spiritual walk depends on whether you're making the decision to die to yourself. Whether you're going to go on campus or whether you're going to go in your high school and you're going to invite somebody because you feel uncomfortable, are you going to choose to die to yourself in that moment? You know, many of you guys are, that are married, your children are depending on you to keep continually forgive each other and to set an example of love. But the question is, are you going to be able to crucify and kill your pride and be able to forgive your spouse and move forward? That's what it, this is depending. This is what Jesus is trying to communicate with us, that if we die to ourselves, We'll produce many seeds. And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Trent is getting baptized. Trent's right over there standing up. Give him a round of applause. All right. Uh, Trent's getting baptized this morning. And uh, it's very exciting because he's making a decision to die to himself this morning. He's making a decision to let Jesus be Lord of his life. And uh, he's been studying the Bible with Jeremiah and Isaiah, who've been doing a great job leading those studies. And I came in on Wednesday and on Thursday, we, we got a chance to jump into a Bible study. We did the church study. That was great. And then we counted the cost on Friday. And as I was, and as I was, I was talking to him, I said, hey, how's it going? And I asked him to, you know, to share with me, how's everything going? You know, what, it, what, are, what is going to be the biggest challenge that he's going to see as he makes this decision to make Jesus Lord of his life? And he said, one of the things is my family. They've been persecuting me. And I said, how do you feel about that? And he said, you know what? Uh, I see that my life can impact their life. If I'm willing to let it, if I'm willing to die to myself, I know that I can influence my family. And now, as a matter of fact, I see more of an urgency to get baptized. And I was just like, man, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. Let's give him another round of applause. That's super inspiring. He's getting ready. But, but that's what we got to have. That's the mindset that we need to have. That, hey, if we're willing to die to ourselves, other people are going to be able to live. And we got to have that decision to be able to do that. And as we come in for a closure here, I, I want to just share with you some functional faith steps. First, remember that God works in stages. You know, we cannot rush the process of faith. Wherever God has you, we got to learn how to embrace it. Remember that God works in stages. Two, we want to follow Jesus' examples of his seeds falling and dying to themselves. Jesus died to himself so that we can live, and we got to continually imitate that every single day. Three, find rest in God. See, after you plow the field, after you work the, the, the land hard, and after you prayed, and after you fasted, and after you've done everything that you've been able to do, I want you to just get some rest with God. Because when the harvest comes, you're going to need that rest. You're going to need that energy to be able to get what the blessings that God is bringing your way. Amen? Amen? Now, I want to encourage you to stretch your faith by praying and inviting a friend to come sit next to you next, uh, next week at church. I want you to go ahead and have that mindset. How can I invite somebody else? And to, to finalize this, I wanted to share one of my favorite scriptures. And, and it's in Psalms 121, and I want to give you the background. See, what's special about Psalms 121 for me, as I was prepping for this sermon, faith allows you to trust in God and rest in God. And, and Psalms 121, 
Uh, so I actually memorized this song in Spanish when I was about seven or eight years old. Uh, my mom does not know how to read in English nor in Spanish. Like, she cannot recognize the letters. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to educate uh, myself and other people. But she would go to church and she would listen to, 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 to different scriptures. And she came across Psalms 121. And she asked me at the age of seven or eight to, mem- to read it and to memorize it and to recite it to her almost every night. And I want to share it with you because as I've gotten older and as I've gone through difficult challenges in my life, I've been able to cling to this scripture. And this is where I want you to find rest in God. And look at what it says in Psalms 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where does my help come from? The maker of heaven and earth. And look at what it says. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Isn't that a refreshing psalm? Isn't that something that you want to continue to ponder on? Because as I thought about it, I was like, well, if God neither sleeps nor slumbers, he's always awake, then what's the purpose of me worrying? What's the purpose of me trying to figure things out on my own? See, that's not the case because we have a God who is almighty, a God who is watching over us, and we can put our trust in him, even when we don't see what's going on. So I just want to encourage you to remember that, and as we get ready to take communion, ponder and meditate on how God is watching over your life. Because of Jesus, we're able to find rest in him. So go ahead and bow your heads, and we'll go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this morning. Uh, God, thank you again for an opportunity just to get, dig into your word and thank you that we can put our trust and our hope in you. Regardless of the difficult times that we're going through, God, uh, we can put our security in you. And want to say thank you, Jesus, for, we, for being willing to die on the cross. Thank you for suffering. Thank you for uh, showing us how to die to ourselves and see your unconditional love. As we take uh, the bread and the juice, God, Help us not to take your, 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 your sacrifice in vain, but to really consider how we may imitate you. Thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are my love. 
our strength, the only pure one, the everlasting light. You saved us, Jesus, Lord. Lord. Your name is Jesus, Lord. Lord. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right. Uh, so as we get ready to close out our service, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to go ahead and uh, stand up. Go ahead and head to the back. We're going to witness one uh, a baptism. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the back. And uh, thank you guys very much. Enjoy the rest of your